can hardly feel the pen in my fingers. My whole body is numb. I could hardly say the words on the page. I can't stop crying. They've taken away my heart. Stanley has been arrested for the bombing of Rory's pub. Someone must have set him up. I asked my father if he knew who would do this to Stanley. He just said that I should move on. Stanley won't live long inside prison. I nearly spit in his eye. I swear by all that's holy, if I find out that he had anything to do with Stanley being arrested, I'll burn him alive. Why is this locked? We hadn't been to the ocean since spring, and it was a shock to see our tree so barren and frail. As we walked, Stanley wrapped his coat around my shoulders. It was still warm from his body, and I pulled the collar up to my nose to see if it still smelled like him. It didn't. It just smelled of dust and mothballs. Stanley said his father would bring him here and say, This is why we struggle. He thinks that now he finally understands what his father meant. But I wonder. I laid the jacket on the ground and pulled us both onto it. I just wanted to make him forget the rest of the day. I wanted to forget the rest of the world except for him. The grass was itchy and dry and the sky was as white as butcher paper. Neither of us bothered to speak another word. The cold wind would have just carried our words away. That water looks disgusting. That water isn't freezing. It just fell. That cleared him away. Everything is in place. But the air... It feels hollow and empty in my chest. Oh, I can hear my heart pounding in my ears. In just a few hours, life as I know it will be over. But that's only if I'm very lucky. Otherwise, my life will just be... over. Today I'm rescuing Stanley.
could be a shortcut to the top of the mountain. The air is heavy with the stink of rot and the buzzing of those damned insects. I don't hear it so much as feel it. I'm afraid it might drive me mad. If I'm not mad already. Molly works at the prison. She was worried about taking the job, but my father insisted it was good to have one of our own on the inside. He just wanted to use her. But it turns out, I'm the one putting her at risk. She got the powder inside, and there's a lad from the neighbourhood who will slip it into Stanley's breakfast. If he eats enough, the pain in his guts will be so bad they'll transfer him to the hospital. But if he eats too much, it could kill him. There were so many people in the market, I couldn't hear myself think. I needed to get out of there. But when I asked Stanley to choose something for supper, he just replied with his usual, whatever you want. I wanted him to make a decision for once so I could stop thinking about absolutely everything all the time. The bags were so heavy and my hands were cramping, and someone close by smelled like goat. It may have even been me. So I dropped everything and let the bags spill all over the street. I didn't care. I'm sick of the crowds and the stink of curry and I'm sick of the hate. I want to walk through green grass. I want to feel cool air on my skin. Under a sky the colour of butcher paper. What a jumbled mess. are gone.
All right. Now the path is clear. I try to stay awake. Keep my mind on... Before the plane crashed, you didn't... You didn't finish your story. About the time you stole the box of sweets. But I think I know exactly how it ended. Your da, he knew what you'd done. He just didn't know why. Still, he never asked you about it. Never accused you of anything. So you never told him the truth. But it was always there, wasn't it? An abandoned space between you. Like an unfinished story. She sounds so weak. Hang on, Leonor. I couldn't go to my father for help. He's all for letting Stanley take the fall. But the mad bastard with me today didn't know that. So he did everything I told him, including stealing an ambulance. Molly called us about Stanley's medical transfer, which gave us a head start on the real ambulance. I looked ridiculous in the uniform, but our documents were perfect. So I kept my head up and let Stanley inspire my confidence. Even so, I nearly fainted when the guard wheeled him out on the gurney. He looked dead already. The guards loaded him on board, and I drove us away. Five minutes out, and the mad bastard dosed both the guards with anesthesia. And just like that, Stanley was free. Oh shit! That water smells. No wonder there's so many bugs. See if that helps with the smell. Ugh. Nope. Now I can see what I'm walking with. Rory hosted a wake at his pub for the victims of Wednesday. I think he was just trying to show off. He got arrested last year for dealing and the police broke his hand, so suddenly he's all political. Stanley and I sat in the car for a long time, watching the front door swallow all the black suits until the pub looked like it was filled with ink. Stanley opened the car door, but I grabbed his arm and asked him to take me to our tree. I felt a crippling anxiety that if I went into that black pub, I'd never see the sky again. Stanley didn't say a word. He just started the car, and we drove away.
That's it? Is that all you got? Oh, you bastard. Need to figure something out. The bugs are still there. Jesus! Almost there, Leonor. Almost there, love. Mother Mary, Paddy has been killed. The British papers named it the Boxing Day Raid. But it wasn't a raid. Around here they're calling it the Wren's Day Massacre. Seven people shot down on the day after Christmas. I don't know what they're meeting about and I don't want to know. They were all violent men except for Stanley's father. What, what was Paddy Whitaker doing there? And how did he hear about the meeting? What, was he trying to talk them out of whatever they were planning? I need to find Stanley. He must be going through hell. No, no, no. 
Anna, no. Uh, she's not here. Please tell me what you want. I've done everything I could. Uh, everything. Find my dad. Tell him I want to go home. Oh, my God. No, not again. Oh Christ. I'm still alive. Thank God. Oh, Christ. Okay. Okay. I'm okay. I thought things were getting better. 
I had hoped we were moving forward. I believed in Patty Whitaker's message. Violence can't be the answer. But now, he's gone. Rory's pub was bombed last night. Thank the Holy Mother, Rory closed the pub for his birthday party, but 16 people died. One of the victims was a little girl. The last time we were attacked like this, my father went mad. He poured liquor on his anger until it was an inferno that nearly engulfed us all. Now, he's as silent as the grave. And that's even more terrifying. The steam, it's putting out the fire. Freezing. Now I'm burning up. I don't know which one is worse. There. There she is. Oh shit! Leonor! I'm coming! Just hold on. It's almost over. decided to venture farther into the city tonight. He said we shouldn't cross into East Belfast, but I didn't care. I was feeling brave. When we saw the party, it looked deadly, so I dragged Stanley up the steps. I love going to parties where nobody knows me. I can be anyone I want. I told Stanley to pretend this was our house. Borneo, when some drunken arse turns and tells me I'm full of shite, turned out he owned the house. Then he asked us where we came from. A crowd started to gather, and the wrong answer could have spelled trouble. Stanley threw his arm around the man and said, We're from Texas, America. And the man's face lit up. He loved America. Stanley's accent was ridiculous, but his confidence was inspiring, so they believed every word. It was wonderful. Hurry, Stanley. The fire is coming, and the smoke is getting... <laughs> Still alive. Still alive. I can't get across this. Come 
on, Stanley. No! You son of a bitch! The fire roars around me. It wants to crack me open to burn its way inside to the deep center of my core, where I still feel frozen and cold. Oh shit! Gotta clear the path. Until now, I never knew how much my father hated Stanley. And the man has always had his secrets, but he's never just lied to me. He tried to tell me about why Stanley was really arrested and the truth about Rory Cochrane. But I, I can't believe what he said about Stanley. I can't. All those people. Stanley would never.
Belfast is so cold the air feels brittle in my lungs. No matter what I do, I just can't seem to get warm. The other night at Rory's pub I asked Stanley if he'd take me someplace warm, like another country. He said that if he did we'd never come back. But the thought of it sounded so grand. We spent the rest of the night talking about travelling to exotic lands. I would made people we couldn't understand and we'd eat spicy food until our faces flushed and the sweat ran down our backs. I don't think you knew how serious I was. We should leave this broken island while we still have a chance. clears a path. They'll keep the fire away from you. <laughs> but I can't do it from here. Don't leave. Not yet. You'll be fine. I promise. I promise. Please. Stay with me. Christ! I'm back to where I started. Freezing in here. It's so cold. Oh, at least it's warm in here. Containment door open. There's one. Oh shit! Stanley, it's working. I know you can hear me. It's working. 
Come back to me, Stanley. Don't leave. Don't leave me, please. Come back to me. The valve. Almost finished. heavy stone walls I still hear your voice even as this coal slips like a knife into my bones I still feel you with me and yet here at the end I hardly know where to begin the words are difficult to say but I think it's finally time I finish my unfinished story through all our years together you must have known what I've done, but you never asked me about it, never accused me of anything, so I've never spoken the truth. After my father died, I wanted to lash out, and when Michael gave me a chance for revenge, I took it. But when I placed that bomb in the pub, I didn't avenge my father, I betrayed him and it's haunted my nightmares ever since. I feel the heat of the blast, hear the screams of the wounded. I can taste the dust and smell the blood. But all I can see is her little scarf like a crimson river flowing out of the rubble. Every night they return, nightmares of her. I see her entering the pub reaching up to hold her father's hand. I call out to her, don't go in, but she never hears. She always goes through that door. I didn't deserve the life you gave me, and you don't deserve the life I've given you. You rescued me from prison, but you've been paying for my sins ever since. You sacrificed everything to run with me. It's time you left my nightmares behind. Without me, you can be free. Without me, you can go home. Leonor, you are my light. Goodbye. Go ahead, rescue one. We have one survivor. Patient is female. She's slightly hypotensive at 90 over 60. Respiratory rate is 14 and O2 stats are good in the 90s. We have mobilized her leg and started warming measures. She's pretty blue, but she's still with us.